Behind the Shades. I think that's what it all boils down to. What do you, what's something that you've observed in your clients that prevents them from having that type of healthy relationship with food? Um, diet culture, um, all of the fad diets. I mean, it's the keto and the, you know, and there are people that firmly believe in, in some of these things. I just, I don't, I believe that you have to make this a healthy lifestyle, but and, and I think, okay, I'm going to try keto for 30 days. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to try paleo for 30 days. But that five days later, that didn't work. So, I mean, instant gratification. We live in a world of instant gratification. And if I can't lose 10 pounds by doing keto in five days, then I'm moving on to the next thing. You know, it's so we set mindset. Mindset is a huge thing we work on. Mindset's huge. And I appreciate you sharing that because I will 100% agree. Getting into the gym, mindset. Putting down food that is, isn't the healthiest, it's mindset. Because let's be honest, when you're looking at your cupboard or your fridge and there's some things that have to go, that separation, I've seen some people who would oh, yeah. maybe you've seen this, it's like they're experiencing separation anxiety yes. when they have to empty out their cupboards and they're throwing it in the bin. And do you go through that with them? Like, are you we do. there with them maybe? maybe not physically, but are you there with them on a, on a coach level where you're saying, Hey, some of these things have to go. Are you prepared yes. to separate yourself? Yes, we do. And, and I try to make sure that they're prepared, really prepared before ever coming into the program. And then just walking through them step-by-step. Step. I have a lot of, a lot of clients who, well, my husband is not going to eat healthy. Well, we, so we talk about that. You know, my husband's not the healthiest eater. Um, we do eat meat. I'm a meat eater. So my meat, but then I have to plan my sides around what I'll eat and what he eats. And then I have to just know that those are hard no's for me. My husband can eat rice every single day. That's, I don't eat it every day, but you know, I have to know what's a hard no for my body. So a lot of it is just mindset and discipline. And yes, I do see a lot of separation anxiety, especially today when everything is so expensive. It's like, Mm -mm, I can't get rid of that stuff. You know, it's so it's it's kind of a double edged sword right now, just with everything being so expensive. And I think that people think that I really want to start this healthy lifestyle. But we also talk about how to do that on a budget because it's just such a double edged sword right now. Perfect. I want to pause there and say for those who are. So, Dina, so when you mention um, that. You speak to the women and maybe the husbands, but you gave your, your situation where there's a difference in eating habits between you and your spouse. Is it possible to get the married couples to kind of do it together? Is that an option? It is. It is. I have a lot of clients who do it together. And I can tell you that since I've even started this and he's, my husband has seen my changes, he's starting to say, hmm. Maybe I should be getting healthier. So as the progress, you know, as we, I'm, even I make progress, I can see little changes in him. And yes, I have several couples. And then I have a lot of women whose husbands are super hardcore. Like, you know, I have a couple who are like, no, he's doing this thing that's way too hardcore. I can't do that. Like, I need something sustainable. Women are looking for realistic, sustainable, help me make this work around all the other things that I have to do as a busy wife and mom. So and that's what I try that, to teach. So when you present that, because when I look at it and I'm like, that's, I'm just imagining a household full, like a full household all on the same page, eventually, like, because you're dealing with the woman and the woman will come. But as you mentioned, when they start to observe certain behaviors, they're like, wait a minute, let me try that. Yes. Let me see that. Do you get trickle down success stories for the women you help? I do. I do actually. Um, I have a couple of clients now who um, one of my clients is the trickle down from her husband. Actually, he was not my client, but she reached out to me because he was living this healthy lifestyle. She knew she needed the accountability, but not from him. And so that's kind of how that worked. And then I have another one who is um, her children are actually starting to model. And I even see it in my four year old when I'm doing my exercises. He's doing his best. I mean, he is doing it his way, but he's right there. 
And he tells me all the time, every morning, I'll say, okay, I'll say, you know, I'll say his name and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to fix me a cup of coffee. And he's like, no, that's not healthy. You need healthy breakfast before you have your coffee. So I do, even in my own household, see a trickle down effect. They um, watch. Don't eat that. Don't drink yes, that. <laughs> yes, yes. Mama, I need some water because it's healthy. I need my water to wash down my Oreos because my water is healthy, but <laughs> balance. It's all about balance too. I love that you mentioned that because I think some people confuse um, unhealthy living with just your binge, you're just eating the chips, the cookies and things of that nature. But we don't ever talk about the other side where you're so restrictive, where you're not getting the type of foods that you want. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as well? I do. I do. And I think that's just as much as a, of an addiction type eating disorder as the binge eaters, you know, and I think that if you, so I think it's very easy to set yourself up to fail. Um, if you go too restrictive, okay, I'm eating these, these are the calories I'm eating. I'm counting these macros. This is what I'm doing. You're going to fail on about day three. I don't know that I ever made it past a Wednesday when I was trying to be on a diet. Um, and I, and I always had that. I'm just going to start over a Monday mentality. And then you just binge eat for the rest of the week. And, you know, I think a lot of women, but I, I don't think it's healthy to be super restrictive, right down every little thing you put in your mouth. And I mean, that's not realistic. That's not, that's just to me is just as dangerous. I mean, I think it's fine if people want to count their macros, if they're really trying to lose weight and, you know, they've got some goals they want to meet. But I'm talking about everyday realistic women, moms, the one, the biggest thing that probably one of the questions I get asked the most is, if I work with you, do I have to count my stuff? Do I have to put it in my fitness pal? Do I have to count my macros? Because they don't have time. No time. It's just, they just don't have time. And at the end of the day, it's almost not realistic either because when you've got six kids running around, you don't have time to sit down and put stuff in my fitness pal. And you sure don't remember what you had for breakfast if you try to wait and do it when you get it. You know, it's, it's so it's that kind of stuff. Mm 